This is Michi Hoyer, I'm welcome. I'm 10 liters for the full tank, and then I go. Yes, exactly. This is Michi Hoyer, and this is another episode of Sim Racing Academy. Today, with Patreon member Kevin Morville, and uh, we're in the Formula Renault 3.5 around the Hungaro ring. And today is a very special to our session as we are learning about suspension, we're learning about dumpers and we're learning about um, how to set these up, how to feel these and how to um, yeah to fiddle the right dumpers in just from feel and um, yeah Kevin is out to to take the car around the track a little first um, so today is not really about improving, but mainly about understanding car, understanding physics, understanding the car dynamics, especially in the horizontal area. And I may admit that the Formula Renault is not the very best car, as the front of the suspension is entirely fixed, um, which we're going to talk about a little further soon in this session. Um, right now this is standard setup and I will build something for Kevin here so uh, we can feel a lot and we can we can get def different ideas um, about driving so today's session is gonna be I gonna get him a setup that has the most stiff dumpers in the rear back end uh, into first place and I ask him to do five six seven laps then tell me about the balance uh, without looking at the setup um, and then I sent him the very same setup just with very very soft um, dumpers in the rear so the entire opposite and uh, then we start fiddling around getting a feel for all those kind of things um, the special Things or the, the specific things here for the Formula Renault, we're gonna deal with that once we're sitting in pit lane, once we're sitting in the garage. That looks uh, really good in general already. I don't think I'm going to, to drive a lot here today as we're not too much into driving lines. They look good really. Uh, he's a little bit too much turning on the wheel um, so I can maybe do some more work with that in the end but we're first gonna um, work hard on the um, on the dumpers area and on the suspension area Have you started on the default setup? Just higher? Yes. Fuel? Okay, perfect. Yes. So once you're warmed up, just let me know. Sorry, I don't hear. Say again? Can you repeat what you said? Yeah. Um, once you are warmed up, just let me know. <clears throat> okay, I think I will do just one more lap. Okay. So in the meanwhile, um, we are on factory defaults as well and we're going to speak about the suspension right here. We're going to keep all those values 
as they are not relevant but looking at suspension you see the special thing here the front suspension does have slow uh, sorry softest slow bump slow rebound fast bump fast rebound um, the third springs at the front however they will be um, available um, I think they are linked to each other so we're gonna put them very soft indeed so the front end is now entirely softened on the dumpers however we're gonna keep the spring rates front and rear and gonna put the rebounds and the bumps extremely hard all the other stuff will leave like this and uh, gonna save this and so, or better, well, we send it to him, but we're also gonna save it as saying all dumpers hard, rear, um, also giving that notes. Alright, that looks good, that uh, driving lines are suiting um, the way we want to work today. So, um, first I sent you a setup, please just load it and uh, don't look at it yet, because uh, okay. we are finding out about balance, so my task for you is put another five laps in and uh, tell me what you think on it afterwards. All right. Right. In the meanwhile, um, I'm going to open the report for him already so I can parallelly start working on it while he is driving. Because um, what I'm going to tell you guys is not something very specific, but it's very general. And in the pl it applies to a general um, movement of the car. And I kind of will be interested to see his balance, to see his lap times, of course, indeed. So, uh, speaking about lap time, I need to open the page here. Bear with me. There we go. So as of right now, the car is set up in, as I said, softest front third spring, softest front spring and hardest rear spring dumpers. Um, that will be interesting because usually the car now should be uh, kind of reluctant to move weight around in the rear. 
whereas it should fully grip at the front, saying every little break-in makes the weight that is being made movable all the way to the front. Um, so the front should be very grippy in general, um, being able to quickly um, let the car roll from left to right, although the real task that's been done by the um, anti-roll bars there but still as there is car in the, um, roll in the car and forces being dragged left and right lateral uh, this also has been adjusted or also has been um, influenced by the dumpers right now the rear end being so stiff uh, should have issues getting the traction down also should have issues um, getting over the curbs in the in the rear end but the overall turning should be really really good also with the acceleration um, there should no understeer come up as uh, with acceleration the weight tries to go to the back but the back some sort of refuses to take the weight that quickly and I'm gonna bring up the Mercedes uh, not the Mercedes the Ferrari again here real quick once I find it, there it is. Um, so, basically, the dumper's movement here, right now at the front, is very, very easy. So, um, dumper's fluid is so soft and so less pressurized that the springs can move up and down very a lot. Um, basically, it's bouncing up and down all the time. Uh, which on this track is some sort of good because in the, if you got front soft suspension uh, and regardless of what kind of suspension we got here right now it keeps elevating jumping up and down um, you can't change that in the car and this is why the car just behaves as good as it does but this spin this spin is actually due to the rear dumpers refusing taking the weight on so they slide a lot more um, as weight means additional downforce, so the dumpers here at the back of the car, they make this movement incredibly hard. So the entire suspension becomes very stiff. Um, in the acceleration movement or the deceleration movement is sort of slow, um, keeping the weight at the back a lot, which uh, gives us nice braking stability. But um, it also makes the front end a little too lazy. So we might just have hit the sweet spot here with the dumpers already. But we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of things with them. Uh, we're gonna put them into the extreme areas before putting them into the um, into the other areas. Some kind of interesting seeing his feedback on it. Especially in those corners, getting the traction down is incredibly hard with us with the way dumpers are set. As uh, they still like the car to keep rotating at it. Okay, so what's your feel? <coughs> I um, I feel more thing uh, for the from the the wheel, mm -hmm. and uh, I am more I am more confident in the entry of the the corners. Mm -hmm. The 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 car respond more f faster faster I think. Okay. And yep. uh, for for me that's uh, that's comfortable. Okay, perfect. So exactly what I thought. Um... I'm gonna tell you a little more about this, and later I have to talk to but him. But there is one thing I feel the um, 
the I'll I feel the lack of front end at the, those corners. This and this one. Lack of front end, you say? Yes. So on the steer. Yes. This makes kind the. Of... I don't know if it's because of my driving style, style or or because of the setup. Could be a little bit of both, but more on the setup in that regard, which we c can just do. Um, limited wise, something about it. Uh, you want to do further laps on that? Maybe one, uh, one more. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So that is very interesting. What he says, he says there's no feel for the wheel, which is uh, he means that the force feedback is entirely gone. That is probably more a caster, um, a caster setting. But at the same time, he has very good comfortable comfortability into the corners, and um, this is sort of exactly what describes this. Um, effect what I said it keeps the weight at the back it keeps the weight the downforce on the rear axis given maximum performance on braking as long as you go straight and even if you start turning in on the wheel the weight still likes to stay in the back and therefore pushes the rear tires down giving grip or increasing the tire load and giving grip there um, so that is definitely um, an effect from the from the dumpers here he means exactly that movement and this could be down to the fast bumps uh, being really really low at the front um, I'm not sure if we can move around with that so I'm taking just down some notes Alright, so that was very interesting feedback. Um, basically, we're going to do more experimental laps because I'd first like to like you to show you the extremes either way, and then I'd like to get the the fiddling done right with you if you're all right with that. Okay. So once again, just take the setup and uh, don't look at it, just load it and go out, do some laps and tell me what you feel. Or do you have anything to add to this run as of right now? Uh, for the moment, no. Uh, I said for the, the two corners. Yeah. And uh, that's, the, that's the biggest feeling I, I have. And um, but for the for the other cor corners, that uh, that is uh, like uh, I said on the track. Yeah. Okay. So you got no feel on the wheel, which could be a caster problem, rather than anything damper related. I mean, it gets supported uh, from the damper, I think. I um, yeah, my my feeling uh, with the the wheel is better uh, since your uh, first set first set you sent me. And uh, and by the way, I um, I feel like a bump of the right corner. I tell you, I I have a lack of uh, front end. I don't know if if this is the re the reason, but uh, I feel it. Just uh, in in my last uh, my last lap, I uh, I uh, exit the, the track, mm -hmm. and I feel the bump just before I exit the exit in the corner. Uh, that is turn nine, the right hand that you're talking about, where you exited, right? So after the chicane, the right hander. If you, you go for the left and then you go to the right, and the right you the went wide. Nine. Yeah. yeah. The, the turn nine. Yes. Yeah, I can I can tell you why that is. So right now, I can tell you so much. What we keep stationary for as of right now is the front end has. Literally no, um, 
no dumpers at all right now. They are so soft that the suspension is moving very quickly and um, very easily. So the moment you hit the bump, you simply get the springs get pressed, but the shock, the actual shock, is not being um, being dampened by the car itself. So that makes the car start to jump around on the front end. Uh, you know, if you if you press a spring and just keep it dancing without any friction, it keeps yeah. dancing up and down. And that is basically yeah. what sort of happens over the bump, which slightly. Um, well, how should I say? You know, you know what tire load is, right? Yes. So the moment you have um, a jumping spring, the tire loads up and down. And I'm gonna put my big Ferrari on here. Wait a minute, um, because that's gonna be very interesting in general. Um, bang. Wrong one. Um, if we're speaking about the Ferrari, um, the Lego Ferrari I do have here, um, I'm just going to put the cars on the book. So um, the tires, when they are touching the ground, they have a specific load according to the yeah to the gravity and to the amount of downforce being generated. Yeah. In that area, let's say the tire is able to to deal with a 10,000 newton as tire load. Now, if the tire load is jumping around between 10,500 newton and 9,000 newton, so the load is going up and down, the tire is still attached with the ground. So despite the tire just sort of jumps around 10% of value up and down, I, I would say. Um, it keeps losing even more grip, like even 20 or up to 30%. So you can speak about the degressive decline of grip while the, um, the load of the, car, of the tire is jumping around. So with the springs being so soft and not... The, and also with the, with the dumpers being pretty much not dumping at all, the springs gonna move up and down, lifting the car up and down, and that makes the, the load of the tire, so the tire load going up and down. And therefore, because it's not steady, make the tire lose the grip, which then in the end makes you go off track. Um, we work on that later, but for now, we're just going out with a, with a setup I just sent you. And as yeah. I said, please don't look at it. Just drive it and tell me what you think about it. Just before I go, so the the, the idea is to have the the top tire load and the bottom tire load. The more the difference between the more uh, low, the more lowest possible possible. For yes. example, yeah, sort of. So what it, um, what you want to have in a um, let's say on a bump, the moment you drive over a bump, the, the car gets lifted, the tire gets lift up. So there is um, a force pushing the car upwards from the ground and the center of, and the gravity pulls the car down to the, to the road. And that moment, the load of the tire gets increased. Then after the bump, there is some sort of, you know, the, the force from below pushing the tire up is missing. So that is where the tire load goes down and you want this movement to be stopped as soon as the bump is finished. So you just want to have that increase of the load, the decrease of the load, and then you want to be as quickly as possible back to a sort of constant tire load again. Okay. Now with the, with the springs being badly dumped or not dumped at all, the spring in a perfect world without friction keeps jumping up and down as long as, uh, yeah, I mean, without friction, it, it keeps always jumping up and down. And with the dumpers, you start to slowly but surely um, taking, yeah, you start taking energy from the system. So with every move, that up is a bit dampened, down is a bit dampened, and at some point, the spring's going to be stationary and um, without any swinging um, because of the dumper. So that's their actual job. 
and you want to get that um, that movement as low as possible, and also the effect of the movement as low as possible. Okay. So, as of right now, um, we got the rear end entirely soft now, so all values 1-1 one, one in the rear rather than 16-16. Sixteen, sixteen. And I'm going to look forward to his uh, feedback. Um, I'm trying to find a graphic here. So anyway, um, speaking about this tire load thing, um, We are experiencing that kind of thing where, um, yeah, the tire load hits its maximum of uh, what it can handle anyway. So, you know, it, you are not just increasing the, the grip of a tire because you put 5 million tons on it. At some point, um, there is a maximum possibility a maximum possible grip reached um, according to his uh, yeah physics and his abilities so with that being said um, you're gonna hit a specific amount of grip at a certain level and it does not go beyond that even if you could put more kilograms and more load on the tires Also, I think from his driving, he's killing the tires a lot. That's interesting car movement and car behavior here. 
I think the car is now much more tail happy because uh, it just loses the weight once you get on the on the brake so he should lose his sort of confidence on on the brakes on into the turn in especially in turn five uh, that was easily be seen once he touches the curb cars pretty much gone immediately In this case though, there is very nice traction, um, so the car doesn't rotate as good on throttle when the weight goes to the back. Um, so you have to some sort of aggressively push it a little. But the overall turning momentum, the overall turning of the car shall be increased as the weight now goes to the front and uh, goes more quickly to the front so once you do your turn in the initial turn in shall be really really good and I'm just looking forward to see what he thinks and to see what he says on the car This movement, this exact movement when turning into where he needs to catch the slide, this is because of the dumpers as of right now. Since the dumpers are very soft now, they are handle the very same movement than the front. Usually I'd like to put the hard, uh, hard front dumpers now and soften the rear in order to make the contrast even more clear. Can't do that on the car though. Um, but yeah, the initial turn in now is so good. As you can see, he turns in slow, then turns more, and then the car still grips at the front um, because all the weight is there. Um, yeah, over the bump he's now likely to lose it. And it's not to him being overly aggressive, but it's just the rear end has so much issues keeping the car on the ground with the missing downfalls, with the missing weight on the rear, especially on the turning. They're the way, that's all the way to the front. And um, also now the weight might travel too quickly all around the car. So whatever the car movement is, braking, turning, acceleration, the weight is allowed to move freely around wherever it wants to go. Well, wherever the, the laziness g makes it go. Um, and this might be just too quick for the car to handle with. So in that case now, dumper is definitely too soft. You see the turn in oversteer. So she gets the grips, immediately gets into the slide, then lose the front, lo uh, use the front load. Sorry, lose the front load of the tires, gets into the spin, into the slide. And uh, this was very good as long as tires were cold, but I'm pretty sure now the tires are cooking pretty much. Um, However, of course, you want to have the suspension in general as soft as possible, especially around Hungaro ring track. So, um, with the soft dumpers and the soft springs, that is as soft as it can be, apart from even softer um, anti roll bars now. But I'm interested to hear what he says. I would be surprised if he not mourns about the rear end being some sort of unstable into the turns. His lap time consistency is good though. 32-0, 32-2, 32-1, 32-2. Only the first lap, the 31.6, is some sort of out of the range. 
But he's done an amazingly middle sector with that. <clears throat> it makes sense though that the car is quicker now. Because with the weight now being allowed from the rear end to come to the front end, especially in the cornery sector, so everything that comes up from now, um, the car can actually grip at the front, taking it really good around the slow turns here, around all these S's coming up where you need the front to grip, where you need the front to be pointy. This is all due to the fact that the rear end now gives way the f uh, yeah gives releases the weight to the front saying okay here you got all the weight deal with it this is all due to the softer stumper as possible and the reason why this car works like that is maybe also because the front and dumpers are set up the very same way uh, so usually you try to find the balance by trying to adjust the front towards the rears a little in the dumper settings and um, in that case um, yeah um, it will just find its its own balance right uh, right in that area everything at the at the softest point that makes total sense to me uh, I do not know any car where you got like stiff dumpers at the front and and soft bumpers at the rear even in a Formula 1 car, I suggest the dumpers to be some sort of equal, whereas the spring rates are different there. So Formula car always having a stiffer front suspension at uh, the rear, uh, since the rear needs to be able to follow the front. So if you make the front too grippy, and remember all the weight is located at the back, so despite you want to have the weight where, the, where you want to have the grip, um, you know, if you put a lazy Mars into sudden movement, it's not going to get well just like that. Perfect explanation anyway. So, what do you think? Um, bit. Uh, sorry, one second. What do you think on the car? What is you you think on the feel? Uh, I. I have uh, once again I have more information from the wheel, so uh, that's that's really cool. I prefer uh, in the in that way, and um, the the car is better in the in the entry again. For those uh, those turns, the 18 and the nine, I uh, I don't I don't have the the lack again of the front head, and um, I don't have. Uh, that big feel of the bump for the nine, uh, the ninth co corner. Okay. So that makes. Um, can you do me a favor, real quick, and mm -hmm. load up the the s setup I sent before? Yes. Just load it. Don't drive out. Okay. As your car is jumping up uh, left and right in the in the garage, I'm not sure if it did that before. Does mine do that? No, mine doesn't. Let's see. Hmm. You saw you saw the car bumping in the jumping in the, in the garage. Yeah. Uh, the second set you said B was uh, with the extreme uh, extreme value. Both had extreme values. Because I I saw uh, in a, in a, with another car I saw I saw that with an extreme value for the bump. I I uh, set the car with the extreme value and mm -hmm. then I saw my uh, my uh, my car jumping in the in the garage. Let me test that real quick because it's interesting you say that. Um, I should have same as you. Yeah, mine does that too now, just not as severe. But interestingly, it does it too. Let 
Let me see what it is with the heart thumpers. This is very interesting anyway. What you can do um, is... Bear with me. Yeah, this is a very nice explanation. Actually, it is a, it is a big bug in the game. But it is a perfect um, possibility to, to show you um, how the big dumpers or how dumpers work you can see my car right now jumping up and down or yes. being uh, that in that weird mo sideways movement uh, just as you say so right now on the car is attached the minimum possible um, the minimum possible dumping rate in all suspension so what I did now on the car is I um, stiffened the slow bump and the slow rebound at the third spring on the front and I stiffened all the bumpers at the, at the rear suspension and I click race and I come back into the garage and nothing yeah and nothing so we're gonna go even into a more detailed um, let me see, bear with me. We're gonna go into even more detailed um, analysis right now. Then you see what the dumpers are doing. Um, go to tape position 2527.4 and keep it there for a moment. Uh, can you repeat the number please? 2527.4 So, and then we go slow mode up to 2500 to 7.995. That is the moment where I sort of get dropped out of the, I don't know what, from the car holders or something. But this is the moment where the car drops on the ground. Tell me when you're at 25279. Almost. You there? Two five two seven point nine. Okay. You there? Position position two five two seven point eight nine four. Eight nine four is all right. Now just um, go into slow motion. Keep going the slow motion and see how long it takes after the car drops on the ground until it's got stationary. Basically at 2528.7, it just stops any movement. So it's just sitting stationary right there. So the car drops and in within 0.7 of a second, all car movement has been stopped by the dumpers there, right? Okay, yeah, I saw it. So you can go a little forward and down, uh, forwards and downwards uh, for that, uh, through that tape at that moment to see how the car sits there with yeah hardest dumpers and stiffest dumpers available and now we're going to do the same thing for the soft dumpers and therefore you need to go to tape position 2090.5 2690.5, sorry. 
Yes, I'm here. Okay, and just go through it again, slow-mo. So the card drops first time to 91. And now see how long it's still jumping up and down. It yeah. barely stops at... Now. So, in this time, it's up to two seconds where the car is still bouncing up and down. And now remember, when we're speaking about tire loads, they are bouncing up and down as well, according to the car's movement. So, this is the job of the dumpers, actually. As you've seen them now taking care of the, um, of the car movement in that regard. Um, so, they are trying to stop, or their major... Uh, job is trying to stop this movement of going up and down and um, this is actually despite the glitch here in the graphics is quite bad or is quite well inconvenient in that regard um, as much it does help explain though what dumpers actually do um, so with the soft dumpers and no dampening whatsoever you allow the spring to do whatever it wants and with the hard dumpers, you well, you're taking out of every movement, um, the dumpers start to take away energy from the car and put it into thermal energy, so heat. Uh, that's why dumpers get hot in um, in when they are in operation. They a actually have have uh, pressure vents, and the pressure vents gets pushed and um, yeah, there, this uh, change of kinematic energy into thermal energy, or um, how is it called in English? Uh, entropia. Not sure if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, that is actually what happens. So the kinematic energy is being diverted or converted into into warm and uh, heat and thermal energy. So that's how the dumpers actually work. Um, now that you said you have a car that is better in the entry, you have a car um, that goes good around turn eight and nine with no lack of um, with no lack of understeer, lack of grip, um, and you do not feel the bump as much. Is um, I can tell you why you don't feel the bump as much. Right now, when the front is soft and back then, when you felt the bump the rear was stiff, you felt the bump over the rear rather than on the front. However, the bump was setting the front into movement and the rear some sort of dropped down on the ground again and uh, pretty quickly stopped the movement. Um, with that being said, the very soft approach we had, especially in the last f couple of laps you did, um, that made that bump, because it was just a single one, um, it just sort of uh, avoids it, or it just sort of ignores it. So, um, because your suspension is always going up and down, the bump is just one another shock on the menus, so you do not feel the bump that specific. Know what I mean? So with your car going up and down all the time, uh, if you go over a hill going further up and down, you won't feel the difference that much if you cast some sort of stationary at some point, and then it gets shocked by a big valley up and down. I think you get okay. my point, right? Okay, yeah. It's like um, when when a ship goes over the waves, up and down, up and down. That is what your suspension is always doing. So the ship cannot really feel what is a big wave, what is a smaller wave, unless it's like 15 meters, of course, but you know, if you're on a little boat and there is a little waves going on, you just feel the waves, but you don't feel the height of the waves. However, if the sea is flat, more or less flat, and there is a big wave coming, or a bigger wave, then you feel that one wave. So now, if you compare that over to the car, with the car going constantly up and down 5 to 10 centimeter, uh, millimeters, I want to say, due to the bumps and stuff, you don't feel that bump that is like 15 millimeters big. You don't exactly feel it, or you feel it just less. 
However, if your car goes stationary or on the road, say in up and down two or three or four millimeters, and then this 15 millimeter bump comes, that really makes a big difference on the car dynamics. And um, this is the reason why on the softest dumper settings, as you just drove out on the track, you did not feel that bump in turn eight and nine too much. And as you say, the car is better on the turn in with a soft, um, yeah, with the soft dumpers, you allow the rear end weight to move around quickly and freely. More free, I want to say. Of, yeah, more freer, I think it's grammatically. Anyway, um, that means with the dumpers not being stiff in the back and not sort of avoiding the springs movement from the, uh, from the braking, from the acceleration, um, that is when the rear keeps some sort of weight so the weight is not getting shifted towards the front that means the front tire load and the front load in general is not as much which means potentially less grip on the front and with the car being very soft as you had it just right there uh, you allow that movement of the suspension so once you tap the brake the the rear end's gonna uh, gonna raise the, its ass in the air and going to shift all available way to the front that gets you some sort of the maximum downforce, the maximum tire load on the front, constantly on the front. And that is why you do not have the understeer going on that much. However, um, if, you, if your springs at the front, uh, if your dumpers at the front would be adjustable, um, you also had this turn and oversteer. You know, you turned in. The car started to swing around and you sort of had to catch it immediately, didn't you? Especially in the last turn, I saw there's a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. So that is also because the weight is not being stopped from getting at the front. So now, starting to fiddle in the, um, the dumpers, especially for the middle part of the track, you want pretty soft dumpers in the rear, as in you want them to give the possibility to get the weight towards the front. Um... And at the same time, you don't want it entirely soft, as you, you lose some responsiveness of the car, of course. Uh, you want to keep the rear settled, you want to keep uh, the tire load as constant as possible. Therefore, you want uh, uh, the rebound force always a little higher than the bound force. And that is exactly what we're going to try setting up now. Okay. Do you have further questions on what I, what I just tried to explain? I I think it's okay. So for the moment, no. Okay. Other than that, I also will put the basic rules back in the uh, consultancy report, and then of course feel free if you got com uh, issues understanding what I'm talking about um, to just come up and ask me. Um, so. How would you say, or how would you compare the, the traction and the grip coming out of the corner compared to the stint you did before? And as, as well, the car rotation. I think right now with the, set, uh, with the um, settings you had, you suffered some minor on-throttle understeer, isn't it? Or minor on-throttle understeer? Minor understeer on the throttle, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you had in the second run, right? That was better, so that the car was still rotating a lot in the first run, right? Yes. So, and this is exactly exactly the point with um, the, especially the slow bump being stiff in the first run. Um, you sort of made the rear refusing to accept the coming weight. That means the weight still was sort of on the front, and while you keep throttling the rear. The rear end has not as much tire load, has not as much grip. Also maybe lacks a little bit of traction, but mainly the car keeps its rotation. So it keeps rotating and that gives you like still a good cornering rotation on throttle out of the, f uh, um, uh, out of the accelerating corners like uh, the final turn, the penultimate turn, turn 10, uh, the, the quick right-hander ending of second sector. Uh, sorry, that is 11. Um, 
So in those corners you should really feel a better traction or better rotation on throttle when coming out of the corner with a stiff, slow bump. However, um, the slow bump makes the actual traction bean better. That means the weight comes at the, f at the rear more quickly, you get more stability out of the corner, you can simply floor the pedal. Um, it's just losing its possibility of rotating because now the weight goes away from the front and comes back to, to the rear and pushing the rear car down and sort of um, having a lack of downforce, a lack of weight on the front. And therefore, you have a little bit on throttle on the steer. So we're now fiddling in the bumps, the slow bump in the rear. You want to have exactly that. Um, a little free movement because it was overall quicker, but still some stiffness in order to keep the, um, um, the weight a little bit more at the front in order to counteract the on-throttle understeer. So I'm going to resend you a setup which um how do you, how did you like the car on the braking and in the actual turning was it too aggressive or was it just fine uh, in the braking zone yeah braking zone and turning um the i feel that uh, i uh, lock uh, too much the too much the brake in the, the braking zone uh, i saw it so the the feeling was quite good but uh, maybe I don't know if he, he uh, I can just uh, break. Uh, maybe I can just break. Uh, uh, how can I say? Maybe I can just put less break because I lock too much the too much the front uh, when I when I when I'm in the breaking zone. That's what I that's what I felt. Uh, you lock too much on the front or too much on the rear. Good question. I I saw the the front wheel wheels smoke, uh, okay. having having the smoke, mm -hmm. but yeah, maybe maybe in some time it's because the rear is uh, locking, so I I lock the front uh, after. Yeah, that's possible. Okay. For the for for example, for the first corner, I think it's uh, front mm -hmm. the first corner, mm -hmm. but uh, maybe for the the twelve or thirteen. Uh, for the 13, I think maybe it's a, it's a lock of the rear and then a lock of the foot, maybe. Okay, so with the rebound being so low as it was now in the in the other stint, uh, you should also lose a little bit of braking stability because um, the rear tires have less grip and at the same brake balance, um, the load becomes too hard or the, the the pressure in the rear becomes too hard so that's why we also reintroduce some some rebound not as much as a slow bump though so i'm gonna resend you a setup and um then you can drive that and tell me how it feels afterwards okay so, so now that we got the basic movement of uh, suspension and stuff fiddled in, uh, we now have possibilities to see where we find a sweet spot for that initial car, also for him. Remember, dumpers are not always been a perfect physical value. Dumpers also being used in order to give the car a specific amount or a specific... Sorry, little issue. <laughs> um, no worries. Um, dumpers give a car also um, a possibility to slightly be balanced, you know? Um, so as you have seen, with the soft dumpers, um, he had a better car in the turns, he had more grip on the front, better turning, um, but on throttle understeer however with a with a stiff dumpers in the back um, he was comfortable into the corners as in having a good braking stability he had no front end though 
so he felt a lot of turn in entry and uh, mid corner understeer. However, on exit, he still had a nice rotation, so could go early on the throttle. Um, of course, for every track, there is some sort of a range where dumpers should be, according to carver, um, statics like weight, uh, also the corner types. Uh, you want to have a more or less um, stiff, um, stiff rear dumpers on, on high speed tracks. Um, and also stiff front dumpers on, on high speed tracks, especially the rebound shall be dump, uh, stiff there. Uh, whereas here you more or less want a little softer damper, so you give the car the possibility to move the weight around as it needs it. Because you need that mechanical grip right exactly well where you want to have it. So that is always on the outer edges of the car. And... Um, on acceleration on in the back while turning on the front uh, so it's especially in the cornery circuit uh, you want the way it's been possible to be moved around however with those dumpers you also been able to do the fine-tuning you know if you think I ah, just got that little bit of too much understeer going out of the corner you give your rear slow bump to one or two clicks harder that gives, um, yeah, that makes the weight not go as quickly to the back. Uh, keeps the car rotation in, and uh, you you be able to fix that. And if you then say, yeah, okay, uh, that's great, but still on the initial turn in, I got too much laziness in the car. There's no doubt about that. You either um, either reduce the click. Uh, one or two clicks on the rear rebound um, given the weight free to move however at the same time you need the front being able to to deal with that weight so you may also want to soften the front bump uh, the front slow bump in that area when speaking about acceleration and braking always speaking about the slow bump now introducing the fast bump that is basically just a second a second vent um, or a second pipe that opens once a specific pressure in the dumper has been uh, hit. Uh, a pressure by a big shock like bumps, curbs, these kind of grounds or yeah a bump or a curb is um, causing the suspension to, to move more more quickly, way more quickly than um, than uh, yeah the acceleration. I mean it is a very, it makes makes very much sense, you know. Um, so if we are, let's say, traveling around on the way towards turn one, you, there you go, and then you start braking for turn one. The rear end lifts its rear end in the air, and once you go down in acceleration the weight comes down again a little. However, if you go over a bump, it's more like, you see, more like that. So, um, that is a total different velocity, speaking about the dampers, uh, how they move, how quickly they need to be moved, or how quickly the suspension gets the shock from the tires. Um, so, in more technical, technologically advanced cars, you get sl um, slow bumps, and fast bumps, slow uh, rebounds and fast rebounds. Um, here in that specific car, the, there is just one dump rate inside, so whatever the slow bump rate is, is also the fast bump rate. And uh, yeah, more, more technologically advanced dumpers, um, they react differently the more velocity in the movement is. And I'm pretty much interested to see what his feedback is as of right now. He should now feel the car being more in the middle. And I can also see that on the time. So despite he was really, really quick in the first lap last time around. So a 131.689 with a softest spring. He now got more confidence in the car. He gets a little bit more feedback. He gets a little bit more rotation out of the turns. And was able to put in 
uh, with a purple first sector, a purple final sector, especially the first and the, uh, the, the third sector are now so much quicker. Why? With the rear end being a little bit more stiff again, there is uh, more turning rotation and less threat on throttle understeer out of the turns, which help you out of turn one, out of turn two, out of turn four, out of turn 13, the one that's coming now, that is third sector now, and 14. So those are the major corners where he now should get a better exit from, carrying more speed. Hence why the first sector, which has initially been influenced very much by this turn and exit. So in this exit now he gets more rotation on throttle. That should overall give him the possibility to drive quicker through sector 1. And the very same applies for, the, for this turn. As it was a little too much, maybe a little bit of traction is, is good there. However, here, in that turn, here you go on the throttle, the earlier you can go on the throttle, the more speed you carry up to turn 3, which is full flat out. And um, that gives you another surplus for sector 1, as in of a very good sector 1 time. And uh, I just can tell you that his... Uh, well, this time his middle sector has been purple in that 131.49. Uh, first sector has just been off one thousandth of a second. Um, I'm not sure whether he just gained the time from running wide here, but you see the car is bouncing up and down. It needs a little bit more dampening on the up-down movement, which uh, could be achieved by the third springs here. Actually, we need to swap the values around in the back. Um, Right now the, the suspension is set up oscillating, so the bump is being stiffer than the rebound. Um, so the shock that the tire gets in the rear end from a bump is pretty hard. And then the rebound pushing the car back on into the position where we want it. That is sort of yeah, softer, not taking away enough energy, so that could still be... Um, adjusted. Are we going to go for that adjustment? As of right now, we just uh, see him improve, which is great. Um, also, once again, real road is put to static, so that doesn't evolve during the session, which is very important. So we see whatever time improvement we do. We now, you know, we started from extremes, and we now start to fiddle in the right, the right way. And according to his feedback now. I'm gonna reassemble the suspension here, and uh, then we see what we can can do in the end with that car. It's just, uh, yeah, as I said, we're not too much into lap times altogether. We're more like into understanding car physics. We're more like into understanding the dumpers. That's what today's session is really about. Once again, 31.7. So now you see, with a more balanced car, it's just so much more quicker. So, going from uh, 31.6 and then doing 32.2, uh, 32.2, 32.1, 32.2, He now, with a little dumper adjustment, got into 31.6. 32.4, 31.4, 31.9, 31.7 but still that is exactly what I was referring to as of an entire load um, with the um, weight being moved around so quickly and so free um, 
The tire load might have already reached its peak at the front where more tire load does not really benefit the front end in terms of grip so you don't feel a change from let's say rear bound 5 and rear bum, uh, rebound 2 or so because the front is already at its maximum cap capacity and its maximum capability on the front tire load and if you've reached that point that is basically you can't you can't really increase the front grip by just making weight moving towards the front because the front tire has already reached its maximum so there won't be more grip so what you're going to do with that grip of course you need to keep the weight at the back then in order to support the back more because that might sh um, still have some opportunities and some reserves left so this is exactly what I think what's happening here right now we have uh, already maximized the front end grip with minimum dumper settings all round and uh, we just didn't give too much attention to the rear end of the car now with the suspension being set up the way that the dumpers keep the weight a little longer at the back and also let the weight not travel as freely around you keep the rear tire load a little higher and therefore have more grip at the rear end have less on throttle understeer especially when the weight comes backwards as, uh, with the dumper um, dumper settings being stiffer and that gives him a boost in the overall lap time because he can go quick around the corners you know if you just have maximum grip at the front but no grip at the rear you need to manage the rear all the time however if you increase the rear and grip by not losing nearly 5% of grip on the front end that is really what makes you quick that is what makes you go quick around the corners that is what makes you uh, make yeah makes you more use and more usage out of uh, the available weight being shifted around more efficiently right I'm getting getting lost in words and I hope it becomes quite clear of what I'm about um, as I think now is also the time you see him turning the wheel pretty much and um, I think I will try to give him some some feedback driving wise um, not saying I'm going to hit his lap times whatsoever but I want to definitely try show him a little more how to be more consistent he overturns the wheel a lot um, which makes the tire smoke which makes the tire go pretty much down in in grip and, and wear and stuff and if he improves that he can go longer a little quicker a little more consistent and that is really what it is about so despite we're not having the focus today on driving lines and on driving itself we still want to give him a little bit of feedback here still puts in nice lap times no doubt so 31 6 32 4 31 4 31 9 31 7 32 3 31 2 uh, 32 2 sorry 32 3 so that is still on the same level um, as in the other in the other racing stint. Yeah, he's uh, losing all tire performance there now. Here in that uh, chicane he does it really good, here he starts over rotating on the wheel and uh, not balancing the car right and I want to show him a little technique or a little sort of um, slow in fast out approach that helps him preserve the tires as we're now looking into yeah, a sector that's already 8 tenth off his PB so we're looking into a 32.4, 32.5 I guess and I'm gonna keep the dumper settings as they are just to 
have the direct comparison. Coming across the line, 32.5 even. Okay, Kevin. Yep. I'd like to show you something. Okay. Uh, and therefore you basically just jump into the garage and watch my onboard view now. I am out with the same setup that you were out. Okay, I'm watching you. What I noticed on your driving, your lines are pretty good, but you are sort of forcing the car around the corner, killing your tires too much. Um, so despite we want to work a lot on dumpers and stuff, that is still something I want to show you, as that is what could makes you improve still. So, especially in the in the middle sector, you are sort of uh, <coughs> overturning the wheel too much rather than balancing the car correctly. And I might not even go quicker than you. Uh, I might not even, yeah, hit your lap times, but um, I'm rather less hard to the tires. You do it really good in that chicane here, like minimalistic turning on the wheel that is good but you're too too hard here you should do it hard in the beginning and then open the steering wheel as good as you can well, as soon as you hit the accelerator again you want to open the steering in order to be really quick around the turns I want to say so you make the hard turning in the beginning and after the apex you want to open the steering already Basically you want um, always to have the maximum turn on the wheel and the moment you have the slowest speed around the corner in order to not kill these tires. I think you get what I mean. Yes. So same goes for turn one, you're hard on the brakes. Turn hard on the wheel. Ah. Too bad, touch that curb. And then you want to open the wheel pretty quickly again in order to get out of the corner. Same for this one. Here you want to turn maximum on the wheel and there you want to open it already to let the car move out. Uh, open it too early. Same with turn 4. A quick turn in. After the apex you want to open it again. Same with 5. Once you hit that curb on the inside, you want to open the steering already again. And again, turning hard, opening the wheel again. You see, I just op uh, I'm, I'm just hard on the steering wheel for the, for the first third of the corner. And once I get on the throttle and off the apex, I open the steering wheel again to favor the slow out uh yeah slow in fast out approach so i also do hit a maximum well, point of turning three, two, as you've point, si just seven, seen it nine. um but i just hit that when I'm as slow as possible in order to not kill the tires and once I step on the accelerator again I just release the, the steering again let's see if I can hit turn 4 better this time too quick Okay. Also what I saw on your oh dear on your driving is you sort of keep sometimes going the semi throttle on in the car. Just wait until the car is fully turned around the took the corner before throttling it again. Because with the throttle you keep the oops, you keep the uh, the weight coming to the back and you uh, start introducing understeer into the car. So I can show you in this turn 13 and 2 very good. So you just keep rolling in the car. 
and once it's done the turn uh, best would be without that spinning same in 14 you just turn in and wait 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 and once it's turn enough you can go on the throttle even harder and have a better exit rather than if you sit there and keep semi throttling it all the time try to show you for turn two again So you just turn in and wait, wait, wait. And once it's done the turn in the right way, you can throttle it up so much earlier than before. You just need to be very patient with that. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Best is to see it here. Just wait. Wait. A little too early to be honest. But you just say simply wait until the car has sort of made the rotation you require and then you can simply floor it again. Just like that. That was a one thirty one point two five. Also, for that turn two, you can go in pretty, pretty middle and wait for the car to so somewhat point start pointing towards the. The inner apex, oh dear, too quick there, that was a bad exit out of two. So turn two is a very special turn in that regard though, I'm trying to approach it once again. So that was a perfect example of just being patient enough to wait until the car has done its rotation uh, in that turn 9 where you usually understeer off. If you're a little patient there you can floor the pedal so much earlier. Same here for turn 13 you just wait until the car turns around and you can get better exits. Also same for this uh, final turn. Those those corners are actually some kind of tight, wide, tight approaches. Where you want to be tied on, semi-tied on the entry, a little wide in the middle, and then tied on the exit in order to get the maximum momentum out of the turn. Same here with the turn two. I'm trying to make it better this time. Stay in the middle for quite some long and wait for the car to come to the inside. I was so, once again, I did it wrong. Let me do one more lap, please. <laughs> no problem. What have your tires been after your 10, 11 laps? Can you repeat? What have your tires percentages been after 10 or the 10 laps you did? 69 for the front left. 69, okay. So I did five and a half laps now, you did 10 laps. You were at 70 and I'm still at 88. So I'm like three or four percentages less tire wear in five or six laps. And this is um, mostly due to the fact, I mean, I'm, just, I'm on the same setup than you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is mainly because I do not overstress the tires on the exit. With you semi-throttling it, uh, you make the front tire to scrub the ground a lot more because you're sort of trying to force the car around the corner. And I basically try to get it around the corner right on the apex to then have a easy getaway out the of the turn. That is the main difference here. I just spotted that while watching you drive.
So let's see if I can do that turn two correctly. Yeah, sort of. I mean, without that shift, I probably would have so sort of got the car pointing towards the inside. I think you get, though, what I tried to tell you in that turn, right? Yes. I hate this bump for that in front of that chicane. Me too. I hate bump in general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some are really nice, giving you a nice feel and not affecting you too hard on the driving and stuff. But some are kind of entirely retarded. That was just too much turning entry. Yeah, turning speed. Here we go, wide, before coming tight again, not too late, but same here, we're sort of tied, wide, tied again. That is just the uh, very theoretical, the radius two, might just be two, one. Uh, too, too tight there in this final turn to really make a difference. And now I'm scrubbing the tires as well. Maybe I can get this turn 2 right and then I'll let you drive again with a different it's set cool. though. There we go. Perfect. So that is basically what you want to try in that turn 2. That will boost your good exit, that would make turn 3 very easy to hit. And you carry a lot of speed into 2, slow down then. Of course you can only do that when being in clean air. But you see it here good on the video, I'm sort of wide and then coming tight where it really matters because you then don't go too wide out of the exit of two, not compromising three too much, stuff like that. Um, I will put that in the, in the report as well. So remembering how you drove the car around the track, what did you feel with the, uh, with the set you had? I mean, you were going quick, no doubt. Yeah, um, yeah, I saw I was a little bit faster. The, um, I always have uh, uh, enough grip on the on the front, and uh, I can always feel the the rotate feeling of the car when I when I when I take the took the corner, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, at for some for some. Corner like uh, let me check like the five and the five and probably the thirteen also. I mm -hmm. I felt some uh, uh, um, like I like I'm losing the rear on the throttle on the throttle sometimes sometimes it is uh, sometimes I can take it. So, and sometimes I, uh, this is not. Uh, I'm not confident uh, when I lost the, the rear at those uh, those exits. Mm -hmm. But for for the for the entry in general, I have uh, no no problem. This is a real. I am really I am really confident of uh, for the entries of the of the, the the corners in general. Okay, so you're confident on the entries in general. That's good to know. But um, yeah, that's pretty much what I expected because the slow bump is stiffer than the slow rebound. That makes um, the rear spring sort of oscillating around, making um, it a little bit hard and difficult for the rear to deal with incoming um, with incoming uh, shocks. So I'm gonna swap that around to a certain extent. I'll just keep the slow rebound a little where we are and see if with this kind of setup your issues in turn 5 and 13 are improved. Now the rear end should be able to take up the speed um, a lot freely, a lot more freely and to also accept the weight so therefore have more grip at the rear end which should should boost you. Okay. And 
the same uh, in the same way i will uh, i will try to be more patient in the corner before uh, before put the throttle the throttle um you can try so if you wish um if you feel more confident doing it just the way you you did it as for now as in to um to really make the feel of the 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 new setup um we can stay in the driving style as you want however of course if you're saying like okay um i would be more confident or i can still feel the suspension changes or the damper changes while also um making use of the new technique uh you can go that way too that is up to you now uh, i just wanted to show it to you um as it is no big issue it is just a help an additional help of course um but as we are working on dumpers and feeling the dumper changes um do whatever you su suits you most yeah but i think this is a a good help for me because my um, my big uh, my biggest uh, issue for the races are my uh, front tire in general i destroy them uh, very really too fast and uh, i think you so i think you know why yeah, you're turning too much on the wheel and uh, while still turning a lot on the wheel, you push the accelerator and you, you keep ruining the front with that. <clears throat> Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. About ruining uh, yeah. the front? Yeah, okay. Um, I was not yeah. sure whether I had pushed the torque enable. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah, so good luck. I um, can't wait to see and find out how you feel with a new set. Uh, what happened to the picture here? I have a bad feeling about this. Oh no! Oh, I need to admit I'm not sure whether my driving was on the video. So I may do it again for you in a specific file um, because it seemed okay. like that my my eye uh, my my picture just froze uh, last time when I drove out of the pits. No. <laughs> So, watching his times though, um, as we have put ourselves ahead of him in the timing sheets, uh, I'm not, I wasn't able to put in purple third, but I got purple first, purple second. Uh, yeah, that pisses me off, I think the video is broken, I'm sorry.
first sector about to come up. 32-1. Yeah, I think he's now, of course, trying to put in the technique. I tried to tell him. but I think he has abandoned that lap 32-6 I think with that with that um, style he's now trying out um, he should be able to push the throttle harder and earlier than he did before and therefore he will feel the setup changes whether they are to his liking or not very good turn to that that was a very good turn too, just as you need it. 31.9, the first sector. That is a reasonable quick one. That is uh, even his personal best, I think. Yeah, he never did it at 31.9. So, personal best sector one. Just uh, barely behind me really so he's uh, 0.40 thousandths up on his cell uh, on himself he's just a tenth away from me in the first sector middle sector 31 8 that is uh, no personal best for him but just very very close let's see uh, yeah, he should not uh, touch that curb. So third sector will be bad. Yeah, try to avoid the curbs with the car there. Yeah. Still a 31.8. And he really did a big mistake in the final sector and even took away the power out of it. That was very good. Thirty-one eight three zero in the middle sector. Second quickest of what he did. I think he still lacks performance there on the rear end but that is more due to the bump rather than um, to his driving or to the setup there's nothing really you can do about that bump it's quite heavy there you could lift the rear end a little so to give it a little bit more travel on the suspension yeah, but his turn two is becoming really good. So he's coming closer towards the inside of the of the curb, of the apex of the track. And uh, really gets into a nice spot there.
32-1 middle sector. Thirty-one nine, though. Um, I still believe he is lacking some confidence and trying to put on the new driving technique. Do you feel an improved tire wear at the front? Yeah. I'm um, front left, I'm in uh, 88. And uh, I don't know how many laps I, I did. That is your seventh lap now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there, is a, there is a big difference. Yeah. You're just There's... not as quick as right now, but that is due to you trying to change your, your driving approach. But therefore, I mean, your front tire wear is tremendously better than before. Yes. The, before the seventh lap, I think I was uh, between, between 75 and 73, I think. So there is a very big difference. Sadly, he's slightly missing the apexes here in one. He's doing it over aggressively right now, the slow in, fast out, but uh, that will be good learning value, good learning curve. Um, Hungaro Ring is the perfect track for practicing slow in, fast out, by the way. Uh, very technical, a lot of cornery sections like here. Five, six, seven. Here comes eight, nine, and ten. That is all one fluid. Through nine, you need to be patient. Ten is flat out then, but you need to set up for eleven. Here, the right hander. If you do that right, if you do the slow in, fast out correctly, especially turn twelve is a perfect example. You slow in hard on the steering wheel and now you can go quick out um, if you get the line skim entirely right so that is a perfect example also apart from the slight line in 13 is really really good tight little wide and tighter again very impressive stuff good lines there man that is exactly what you need okay May want to go a little slower into turn two, but just a tiny little bit. Sorry.
that was a perfect example here. Slow in, fast out. Could go a little early on the throttle and then make it perfect. Also turn 13 was a really good one. Little tight, little wide, little tight again. Can also carry more speed on the exit. Little too early on the inside there again. Therefore, yeah, getting that little slidey moment. That was a good turn one indeed. Yeah, he's getting at it. He's really getting at it. I got nothing to mourn there. That is good stuff. I mean, right now, tires are down and he's still been able to, to put in good lap times here. Pretty sure of that. Uh, and in the moment I say he nearly loses it. But his sectors are still pointing like uh, yeah, the last... a bit funny. Funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you mean the balance of the set or just the, the way the car behaves now? Just just my mistake at the turn 5 and the last of the rear. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're finishing your 10th lap now. And what's your tire wear on the front? 84. So 15% better than last time in the last thing. Yes. I mean, you have to admit that you did not go as quick, but um, if you would not have had the mistake in this sector 3, uh, the penultimate lap ago, and would have just put in a, a, a steady 28 zero, you could still do uh, 32 4. And last time your your 10th lap was already a 32 5, just because the car didn't didn't turn as much anymore. How do you feel the balance with the car now, on on the setup? Just, we just moved around the dumper, so everything else is st still state of the art as it is intended. I would still do a minor change and see whether it suits you. Um, other than that, I think we're pretty much on the minimum, uh, on the optimum right now. Unless you say, or how would you say, is the balance now in turn five and thirteen where you mourned about having no traction? Is that better? This is a uh, yes. This is better. This is better. I can um, I can do the the rotate of the car and I can feel it. So I I I can I oh, sorry. I am more confident at the at the exit for those uh, for those corner. The I and I think also we are we we are close to the to the optimum of uh, my feeling. Great. So we'll just like to try a little final adjustment and see if that sort of any helps. And um, I'm going to increase the, um, the slow bump at the front a little on the third spring and massively increase the slow rebound, which should um, sort of keep the car um at the better stable uh, on a better position while while cornering we just try it it might come out the entire wrong direction but you now should just have a little bit more enhanced grip around the middle sector trying to yeah as i said um increase the grip overall um let's see if it does okay
very good turn five. Yeah, honestly, just from watching, there should be more grip now. So the car is more, more rigid. The tire load is not as much jumping up and down. That should give more grip overall on the front. Let's see if we can put it into lap time. And then I'm pretty sure he can beat my lap time. Because why not? Let's see if we can do it. Thirty one nine in the middle sector, definitely a good value. Can't wait to see what he can do in the final one. As tires are still warming up. But he's really doing a better technique than before. Thirty two two. Reasonable pace there in the in the final sector maybe go again a little slower into turn 2 so not entirely that quick yeah exactly like that, that looked very good First sector 32-2, a little down on pace, he did a 31-9 once, but yeah, he's, he's also trying his new technique, of course. His turning inputs have been improved so much, like it's not that severe anymore, not that much forcing the car. 31-7-9-4, there we go, um, very good middle sector. Now it's just about finding the rhythm for the final one. In my opinion, he still lacks some exit speed out of turn 13 here. A little better. Uh, yeah, he wanted too much. Uh, that wasn't the bad final turn though. 31, 8. 27, 7 in the final sector. Uh, his purple is a 25, 5. Uh, 27, 5. But the way he's driving right now, he can be two or three tenths slower in the first couple of laps. Uh, he might be actually slower because of that. But he can keep the pace 10, 15 laps longer than before, just from preserving the tires here. Which is good stuff. 31973. Personal best there. Sector 1. Half a tenth. He's over 10th up, so uh, let's see what he can do in the middle sector. I believe he has more grip on the front end now. I just uh, need to ask him after the session. 
3185, so he's just 11 thousands away from his PB. And if he just puts in a reasonable final sector, which doesn't look too bad as of right here. Gonna come across the line in a 31, 556 at least. He's lapping uh, lap times, uh, he was just half a tenth off. Just half a tenth of his PB. And that is with preserving the front tire. So I would definitely say that the grips of uh, the front axis have been improved. Very nice turn two indeed. Driving lines are pretty much spot on now. First sector, a 32.1. Ah, uh, sadly touching the curb there. Yeah, that's literally about it. If you would go out again, um, you would not be able to finish a full lap due to the server settings. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. How did you feel the final setup? Was it was it an improvement on the front? Was it was it worse? How do you feel? Um, I think there is a, a really good uh, stability of the front. I realized that uh, when I am driving, by uh, testing the other way to, to drive, I feel the, the car most uh, most stable with this uh, this, uh, this setup. Yeah, that makes sense because now the front load should be more constant, therefore in general a little bit more grip and the front end should be more stable in terms of its right height, so um, there is not too much variance in in the downforce and stuff, so that should be a big improvement there. Any further feedback from the setup right now? Um, compared to the to the other, mm, not really. The the, the rest is uh, the same. I have uh, always the the rotate effect, and I can drive with a lot of confidence. I uh, with a lot of confidence, yeah, the the car. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, compared to the just uh, the the one just uh, before, there there is this uh, this stability of the of the front that can that can make me break I think better I I I think I was less uh, lock the the break during this uh, this tint mm -hmm. so so this is and uh, I and I like uh, unlike this feeling this is uh, really good for me very nice indeed so I'm I'm glad you feel the improvements I'm glad you you feel help so um I hope that the um report that comes in the end will give you the technical knowledge again in terms of dumpers but I think you some sort of understood now um, what the dumpers do I guess yes so that hopefully serves the point why we were working together today um, I think it became very apparent also the, the the thing with a pit stop or with a with a car dropping from the car holders in the pit lane uh, in the garage showed very good what dampers do um, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to thank you so much for for coming and I think it is a very educational session we had um, so any feedback from you that where you yeah what you think is there anything we could have done better or w would there still be anything you would uh, like me to um, to tell you on the on the report or is that are you yes some sort of uh, some sort of questions anything right now um, first of all first of all I would like to thank you for uh, for your services I I think it's a I think it's a really great uh, really good idea for for a guy like uh, the guy as you to to teach uh, to teach of the other guys i i really appreciate uh, the that uh, that idea you have so first of all big thanks for for that and um maybe i have uh, just one question mm -hmm. uh, in the with the the the, the bump and the rebound uh, settings 
Yeah. Uh, you said that a bigger rebound is better, right? Um, so yes, because the bump is is being some sort of the push from the from the tires below, and the rebound is some sort of the pull getting the car or pushing the car back to the ground. So um, usually, most of the damper settings are a little slower bump. The, uh, a little a little lower value in the bump and a little stronger rebound to to keep the car pushed towards the ground so you want you don't want the car to be jumping upwards you just want the car to um, uh, to enable the tires to be pushed upwards but then the tires shall be um, or the yeah the tires shall be pushed back down to the road really really quick again so that's why you tend to have uh, the slow rebound uh, a little higher. Um, also, if you have the rebound a little lower, you have this oscillation going on in the suspension, mm -hmm. and you don't want to have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, another question: mm -hmm. um, when you are when you have to to set up your car, so mm -hmm. you. Uh, you you are in the race. You are basic setup. Uh, when do you decide to touch those uh, those settings? Because um, there are there are many settings who are doing some uh, same result. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, uh, I I can I think that's uh, that's the way I, I did uh, before. Uh, I I have some uh, troubles. I have uh, understeer, oversteer, or whatever, and I change, for example, the anti roll bar, and uh, after the, the front spring, uh, etc., etc. When do you decide to touch those uh, those uh, those settings? Just only for the bump, and uh, this uh, the, that's it. Um, usually. On a physical point of view, um, there should always be some kind of basic dumper settings, and there is a way to, I do not know exactly, but there shall be a way to calculate the correct values of the bump and the rebound settings according to some parameters of the car, so not sure, downforce level and weight, and there are some kind of parameters, I would need to do some research on it to really understand it. Uh, but that is a basic what you have in terms of uh, w what you want to have in terms of dumpers. Now, as you say, there are a lot of things um, that um, can be can be done on the car in order to reduce understeer, reduce oversteer, and whatnot. Um, it might be though that the um, like anti roll bar and and general springs they are pretty intense changes of the car they might also change the entire balance over the run mm -hmm. um saying in 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 indie car series for example they adjust the rear anti-roll bar and the front anti-roll bar on the go in order to uh counter steer the tire degradation mm -hmm. um and dumpers are something that you are sitting or um, determining in the garage and they won't be changed during the run so you want to always um, adjust the dumpers according to the feel you need in the first two or three laps to then have possibilities to adjust the anti-roll bar for the balance run so let's say if your car starts to under to oversteer towards the end of the, uh, the towards the end of the run and you cannot change the anti-roll bar mid-race you may want to um, go a click softer on the anti-roll bar just to get a little bit more understeer in the beginning of the stint but once the tires go down um, you can have still a good balance whereas with the general dumpers you want to um, you want to approach a specific corner or you want to approach a specific a specific bump especially when talking about fast bumps or fast rebounds mm -hmm. um, they are it's hard to tell I mean as you know they do the same job but they uh, let's say if you want to just adjust the turn in 
you want to work on the fr front slow bump. That is the, the setting that determines the turning. Um, whereas the front anti-roll bar or the front springs that not only determines the turn and that also determines the mid and the corner e exit. Mm -hmm. So um, on the corner exit, the rear slow bump and the front rebound are the damper settings that um, are approached on the exit. So when you're fighting oversteer into the corner and having good exits you don't want to change anything on the anti-roll bar you just want to adjust the dumpers um, so what you do basically you you put all the setup dials in you put in the basic dumper settings and then you go out and drive and you adjust corner wise uh, when there is a general too good or too bad turning you adjust the dumpers for doing so rather than the anti-roll bars and the springs because the anti-roll bars and springs they have influences on the entire car behavior at all time whereas the bumps um, and the rebounds front and rear just have uh, just be approached in specific in specific moments on the entry or in specific moments on the exit okay so so when you have um, a default uh, a default setup mm -hmm. your advice is to do is to do some uh, some laps and touch the the dampers to uh, to to switch the setup to my to my style before touching the the springs the uh, mm, the other way around I would say so first you go put your arrow on okay. then you put your gearing on then you put a suspension on to get an overall okayish feel everywhere like you want to have a global good turning car and a global stable car so you adjust the dumper and uh, you adjust the springs and the anti roll bars like that mm -hmm. and if you then do further laps you soon start to feel okay um i have a little bit of a poor turn in or i have a little bit of a poor exit and in the first um, event you uh, soften the slow front bump and in the second event you stiffen the slow rear bump mm -hmm. uh, but that is only specific to the entry on corner entry or your poor exit um, when coming around the corner that has if you if you change it on the anti-roll bar or on the springs you change it globally for the entire car in every circumstances so as beside entry also the mid and also the exit whereas the dumpers can do the fine tuning Okay, I see. I uh, I see what uh, what I have to do because uh, often uh, often my 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 feeling often is um, that I set every everything, but not the the bump and the rebounds. Yeah. And I found and I found a balance that uh, that suits that suits me. Mm -hmm. But but I'm uh, I'm a little bit lost because. I, I have my car, my, car, my, my setup looks like well for me. Yep. And, then, and then I have the, the dumper settings I'm in front of and I don't know how to do it because my feeling is good. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so in, in that point, I have to look really, really far to see the, the, little, the little bit thing like a change to to feel it better mm -hmm. that's what you can you can say uh, in, the, in this, uh, this situation that's what i will have to do yeah exactly i mean dealing with dumpers and getting them spot on is a total different level and surely took me the the longest um to understand and i even fully haven't understood yet but yeah you're always learning <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're always learning you're learning, sorry. Yeah. Right, further questions? Yeah, that's, uh, that's it for me. And, uh, and again, really a big thanks for what you do. Oh, you're welcome, man. Appreciate, uh, yeah, appreciate you coming, coming towards me and also taking lessons. That is a big part of it. So thank you so much. Uh, quickly finish the video and uh, then be right back. Thank you.
So guys, that was it. That was the Sim Racing Academy session there with Kevin Morville, and we were talking a lot about dumpers. That was a very uh, yeah, a, a dumpers only two session, two hour session here, and um, yeah, by really going through that session, you re-enable your mind. I learned a lot today again. So um, of course, you always have a specific thinking, a specific feeling about what dumpers do. And when you actually see the car dropping on the ground and see how once the car keeps bouncing and the next time when the stumpers are stiff, the car drops and that's it. Um, that also tells you a lot about car geometry right now. Um, will, be, will be a huge help for me in the future, I'm pretty sure. Will also be a huge help for Kevin, I think, especially as soon as he receives his report. Um, that's going to be um, a game changer for him. Um, yeah, guys, that's going to be it. Kevin, thank you so much um, for being here in the two-hour session with me. Thank you for ordering two sessions of me. Um, by the way, Kevin is Patreon member of me, so he got this as a 20% off discounted price. If you want to know more about that, make sure to check out the www.patreon.com slash Mitchy Hoyer. If you're interested in Sim Racing Academy and getting a session on with me, mail me at uh, simracing at mitchy-hoyer.com and make sure to include what car you want to do, what track you want to do, what simulator you want to do, what is your main target, what do you struggle with, where do you want to work on, what's your sim racing background. Um, if that was for quick to you, check out the description below in the video because there you find all the information written in stone or written in the white web page. Um, again, so yeah, guys, that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Kevin, once again, big thank you for ordering and uh, big thank you also for conducting this so well for actually putting um, the changes into lap time, putting the changes into balance and into proper feedback. And that's something very important. Kevin gave me proper feedback. I expected some things to happen. I saw him driving the car. I had some expectations of what he will say. And he 95% matched that. So that was good stuff. That is what you need to give back to an engineer. Only if your feedback is good, then your engineer will be do anything or will be able to do anything towards your improvement. Guys, thank you for being here. Thank you, Kevin, for the time. And uh, see you there for the next episode of Sim Racing Academy. Goodbye.